Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast, your go-to source for personal, professional, and organizational growth and development. We hope you tune in often for all things people management, organizational development and change, organizational leadership, and social impact related. Maximize your personal and organizational potential with Human Capital Innovations Podcast. Welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. In this HCI podcast episode, I talk with Ira Wolf about the biggest people management mistakes organizations are making in the impending perfect labor storm. Ira Wolf, welcome to the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. It's a pleasure to be here, John. Yeah, I'm excited to have this conversation with you today. Uh, We are going to be exploring the perfect labor storm. And within this this, uh, pandemic context and everyone going virtual, uh, organizations have been trying to deal with all sorts of challenging issues related to people management, staffing, hiring. Uh, We're going to be talking about what uh, employers should be expecting as they ramp up hiring and really get into this this idea of the perfect labor storm that's coming uh, our way. And I'm excited to have that conversation with you. As we get started, I just wanted to share Ira's bio with everybody. Ira Wolf is a millennial trapped in a baby boomer body and the world's first chief Googleization officer. He ranks in the top five global thought leaders in Future of Work and HR on Thinkers360. He's president of Poised for the Future Company and founder of Success Performance Solutions. Ira has presented on the prestigious red carpet of TEDx, Stage of Disrupt HR, and is the author of several books, including Recruiting in the Age of Globalization, selected by Book Authority as one of the all-time best HR and recruiting books. He hosts the weekly Geeks, Geezers, and Googleization Show leads Googleization Nation and is on a personal mission to unlock the secrets of human adaptability, ensuring no one is left behind living in the fastest period of change in history. He recently joined an elite group of global business consultants when he achieved the AQ certified practitioner status. Ira is typically no further than a few clicks away as he is a frequent contributor to HR and business blogs, including Cornerstone On Demand, Rework, LinkedIn, and Medium, as well as a frequent podcast guest. Ira, it is a real pleasure to have you joining me today. Before we launch into the conversation, anything else uh, that you would like to share with listeners by way of background or personal context? No, I think you uh, covered it all, other than uh, I keep chasing chasing you on Thinkers360. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you know, it's it's a pleasure to connect with someone uh, with your... uh, extensive and you know thorough and prestigious background and I always love having these conversations and I was super intrigued as we were preparing for this episode and and you sent over some materials and I was thinking about you know what you had framed in some of your materials uh, you know as this perfect labor storm and I think that's a really apt description uh, so maybe we can start with what you mean by that and then we can start to dig into some specific, um, elements, you know, in relation to the challenges organizations are facing related to staffing and ramping up hiring. So the perfect labor storm uh, was something I've come up with actually 21 years ago. Uh, so if for, for those who were around back then, uh, McKinsey had talked about uh, the uh, war on talent or the talent war. Uh, they were anticipating that there would be a shortage of labor. And then just a few years later, we had the dot-com boom in, in 1999, uh, and uh, there were literally more jobs being created than there were people to fill them. That was a real crisis. Uh, it wasn't just this job shortage. It wasn't a distribution. It was just a shortage of people. Economy was booming. And uh, I was trying, you know, people explained it similar to what they're doing now. It last, the reason we have a problem is the pandemic. And then prior to the pandemic was, um, it was it was low unemployment. And prior to that was, we just had, it was those millennials. They just had a poor 
ethic. And then it was the immigrants. I mean, there was, there was a million reasons why people thought that we had, that they couldn't hire the right people. 21 years ago, it was the same. <laughs> um, not, nothing's changed. People blamed women in the workplace. They, at that time, they blamed Gen X, and then it became the millennials. Now it's Gen Z. Uh, they blamed the education system. They blamed technology. They blamed um, taxes, government, globalization, you name it. And that's what the perfect labor storm was. And I was sitting in the, if you, many of you might recall, there was a movie, The Perfect Storm, a book, and then the movie. And I was sitting in the movie and they were talking about this convergence of three innocent storms. There was like two storms off the East Coast and one coming from, from the West. And it, they were converging to create this once in a lifetime event. And I thought that's what we're talking about. We're talking about a perfect labor storm where we're converging demographics, technology, business, people, education, um, again, shifting demographics, ages, uh, women in the workplace, um, ethnicity, uh, changing jobs, accelerating pace of technology. And uh, it's stuck. And, you know, I talked about it a while. And, then, and frankly, I sort of put it aside because people got tired of hearing about it. It's like, yeah, 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 it's coming, but it hasn't come yet. And we were talking 2020, 2020, never picked that 2020 would be like overnight it would happen. But, but literally it was, it was building, building, building. And then like that exponential curve that goes in the hockey stick. We had a perfect labor storm last year for many reasons. And that's, it's going to continue. It, it's just going to continue. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I remember, um, going through grad school and talking about some of these issues that you just raised back, you know, I, I did my grad school back starting in 2003. And, uh, and so I'm sitting there and, and professors are talking about the impending, uh, they didn't frame it as, as the perfect labor storm, but you know, the, the, this labor shortage, and they listed all the same reasons that you were just listing. And they're talking about, you know, these, these major, the skills deficit and the, the labor gap uh, moving into the future and all the baby boomers retiring and all these sorts of issues and how this is going to be such a huge challenge. And so I remember thinking about this uh, a long time ago, and it's continually been on my mind. And it's actually been rather uh, fascinating to me as I've seen others who don't seem to think it's that big of a deal or, or a big issue, um, you know, from an organizational leadership standpoint, uh, on the one hand, and, and, and politicians and, and others like that, who just don't seem to, to pay much attention to it, other than to acknowledge that, you know, every now and then they'll acknowledge that it's, it's going to be a problem. Um, but I remember, you know, back 2005, thinking that this is going to be a big deal. Um, the, the, the big recession uh, in 2008, um, then changes people's perceptions on that. And, and everyone was thinking, oh, now it's just going to be delayed. Anyways, we fast forward to present time in, in the middle of the pandemic, obviously, um, you know, unemployment rates skyrocketed for a short period of time, in large part due to the pandemic. And so then people are, are thinking, oh, maybe, you know, because of the economic downturn, it's not going to be an issue anymore. But now we see things, you know, uh, coming back strong. And it just raises the issue once again that really, honestly, everyone should have been paying attention to for the last couple of decades. Uh, and and it's you, you, you just have all these different components, the demographic components that are feeding into it. You have the, the uh, DE&I components that are feeding into it. You have globalization and virtual work and the, the uh, disruptive technologies and the interconnectivity that's building into it. You have all these different components that ultimately are making it harder and harder and harder for organizations to get the good talent that they need in order for their organizations to be successful. And, you know, I, I think people have been talking about this for a long time. And yet, you know, I, I suppose it's like other big issues that, you know, you just have to have people pounding the drum on it repeatedly over and over and over again, uh, just to get people to pay attention. But now we're here, we, we see these dramatic shifts uh, the pandemic accelerated us into the future of work faster than anyone could have predicted that it, you know, 
that we would have been here. And, and now we have to be able to deal with it. And organizations are scrambling, trying to figure out how they're going to, you know, have the right people to, to fill the jobs that they need to be successful. It, it, there's, there's a couple of things going through my mind. And, and one of them is, you know, as you said, it happens slowly then suddenly. And, and Ernest Hemingway in Sun Also Rises, now he was talking about bankruptcy, but he said bankruptcy happens slowly then suddenly. And it was like, that's the future. That's what an exponential curve is. That's what changes is that we think that, that uh, you know, Steve Jobs and, or, or the, the, next tech, the, the next tech guy sits in his garage launches a platform and overnight it succeeds. And when you look at some of these fast rising stocks, especially from last year, they've been around for 10 years. We just didn't hear about them. They were just small technology, slowly, slowly growing. And then overnight, then suddenly an event happens and they are our savior. Uh, so that's that's pretty interesting. But I always think of uh, Ernest Hemingway when I hear about this slowly, then suddenly, you know, it, it happened. Um, interesting, and, and hopefully this will stick, uh, that this was the shock. But the Deloitte, um, I'm going to screw up the name of the report if somebody wants to go look for it, but it was like the Deloitte Global Resilience Report. I think it was their inaugural report. And uh, they surveyed quite a number of CXOs and 70, this is significant, 70% said that they do not have complete confidence in their organization and workforce to make the pivot that they need to make, 70%. So we're talking about, you know, come, I mean, Deloitte's not calling up the main street, you know, you know, mom and pop shops, pretty significant following. And that 70% of CXOs do not feel that they have uh, the right people in place, that they have the organizational structure in place uh, to pivot uh, the next time. They're, they're comfortable, they're satisfied that they got through the year, but everybody's waiting for the next shoe to drop. And so hopefully that's a wake up call that, that people finally got the message that there is a perfect labor storm or whatever you wanna call it. Uh, and it's going to come. The, the other, and the other thing, you know, I, I said this last year that for for some companies, recruitment, hiring people was going to be like trying to drain a swamp with through a straw. That because there were so many people that were one unemployed, two is because they were they're looking for another job for they weren't treated properly, they didn't want to make that commute anymore, whatever reason that there's, there's gonna be a flood of candidates and companies just aren't, didn't have the technology, the processes in place uh, uh, to do that. That's, that's another story. We can go down that tangent. Uh, the other part was that we already had a skill gap before the, 20, before the pandemic, the World Economic Forum identified that there's 375 million people worldwide at risk being left behind due to automation and the acceleration of change. Significant, there's about 100 million people that they identified in the, in the US that were at risk for being left behind. And then we have a pandemic and you know, some of the organizations have increased those numbers by 25%. So while we will go back, I mean, the stock market's you know, at an all time high, uh, unemployment's falling. In the last few months, we're in a hire, I'm in the hiring business. I don't, I don't staff and I don't recruit, but we provide pre, pre-employment testing and, and we help companies create a better process for hiring. And throughout the year, we never slowed down. I was shocked. I mean, I've lived through 2008, I've been through 9-11, been through um, other crises and it just never slowed, which showed to me that there was a significant part of the economy that was still growing and thriving. And, you know, obviously distribution and logistics and manufacturing and a lot of those areas. Um, and then the tech, you know, the retail and hospitality, they, they certainly were impacted the most. But we still had 100 million people in place. And those companies were having trouble finding people. And people said, well, people don't want to work. It's the stimulus tracks. It's PPP. Um, and it was, no, it's not. I mean, part of it is, part of it was, yes, they didn't want to do that. They didn't want to take the risk. 
But the other part was that the gaps that we've talked about for 20 some years, those gaps just widened substantially because all of a sudden people couldn't communicate with their work because they didn't, they weren't comfortable with technology. There were, you know, people all of a sudden, you know, you were at work and, you, and they said, well, you can get that on your app. And they go, well, uh, well, can you do that for me? Or I'll have to get my kids to do it for me. And all of a sudden they didn't have their kids around and they didn't have their IT departments around. And even very basic things uh, like getting, uh, like, you know, my, 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 mother and my, my mother and my father-in-law didn't get their stimulus checks. And we go, well, we can go online and get them. Well, they can't go online. Oh, my mother actually is online, but she didn't know how to do it. My father-in-law is not online. Um, they can't check. They, you know, all of a sudden we became a touchless society. And I, I wonder now, I mean, you think about the gap of even going to work, uh, if they have to sign in, um, if it's touchless, uh, if you have to travel, uh, it's touchless. You're going to go to a hotel. You're going to get, you're going to get, uh, I, I just saw the other day for a, a live events, uh, like at Staples Center in California, it's opening up. It's completely touchless. If you don't own a smartphone, how are you going to get into a, an event? Um, so I think that divide that between not, it's not people who are educated, because the majority of, of even 96% of people under the age of 30 own a smartphone in the US. So it's not a divide between the educated, it's, the, it's gonna be a greater divide because of digital literacy, uh, huge, huge problem. And then uh, you know, people have to become, are gonna to have to become much more adaptable. I'm excited to announce the publication of my new book from HCI Press, The Alchemy of Truly Remarkable Leadership, Ordinary Everyday Actions That Produce Extraordinary Results. Consider how the nature of work has shifted over the past 50 years. With increased globalization, rapid technological advancement, and the shift in economic composition, the average job of today looks very different than the average job of 50 years ago. What will the jobs and organizations of tomorrow look like? Moreover, what does this all mean for organizational leaders? What are the core competencies and capabilities of organizations and their leadership that are prepared for continued disruption and geopolitical and socioeconomic shifts? Regardless of what the future holds, increasingly, leaders need to be socially minded, data-driven, decisive, champions of talent, and disruptors of the traditional notions of leadership, teams, organizations, and work. The alchemy of truly remarkable leadership will help you to explore your own leadership competencies and capabilities and consider ways to apply and implement them into your workplace and personal life. Yeah, I, I mean, those are really interesting points. Uh, the, the, the equity issues are in relation to the pandemic. And it's been highlighted uh, many, many times over the past year in terms of health inequalities uh, and socioeconomic, socioeconomic inequalities in relation to uh, the COVID um, impacts and, and the health outcomes for people. Uh, what you're raising though is, is another really important and interesting um, equity issue. And that is around the access to technology, the um, the comfort level with technology and the, the digital literacy around it and how that's going to impact different populations uh, as we move into the future. And, you know, that's, again, that's just one piece of it, but there, there are all these different elements that are overlapping right now that ultimately have put us in this situation where, you know, again, as you coin the term, the perfect labor storm, I, I think that's a really apt description. So, what should employers expect in this coming year as they're trying to ramp up their hiring given the current situation that we're in? Uh, pretty much what we've been talking about for years. Um, it's it's gonna be for as difficult as, as it was in 2019 to fire 
to, to fire, to hire talented people. Uh, it's going to be multiple times more difficult. It's, you know, it's, it's not, it, it's not good news if you think that it's going to get better because people are going to be hungry looking for a job. Uh, skilled labor is still incredibly difficult. Uh, they're also more demanding. You know, we, I talk about a lot about the candidate experience. And prior to 2020, the can, candidate resentment rate, which is a strong word. So it's not that they're unhappy, they're disappointed. Resentment is a strong word. And what happens when people resent, they tell other people uh, about what it was like. It had increased between 2016 and 2019. It had increased 40%. The resentment rate at the same time that technology that companies were investing b literally billions of dollars to improve their recruitment processes and one of the problems is is the technologies were built for the employee for employer they were built to automate uh we're just so busy we're getting so many applications how can we automate this and while they they turned to technology to help them they worsened the candidate experience problem, which would have been fine and good if there's more people that have the talent for the jobs that have to be filled, but there aren't. Um, and when there's a shortage of skill of skilled labor, that skill gap is, is is has increased. Going back to what you said, even about the digital skills, how do you even find people if if your audience doesn't have those skills, or worse, strangely enough? is the companies don't have the technology, the digital literacy, the HR people, we're, we're both in work with HR, the HR people don't have the digital literacy skills that the candidates do. They wanna communicate through text, through messaging, Snapchat, Snapchat um, WhatsApp. Um, they want video, they want communication and the, still, it, to this day, it just blows me away. The most common mode of communication between HR and candidates is email. And emails are opened up 20% of the time. No, and then they, you know, HR complains about ghosting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, the, the yeah. digital transformation piece, I, I think is really uh, an, an important one to zoom in on. And, and to your point, it's, there, there is a skills gap with certain segments of the population in terms of comfort level with these digital technologies and how it, they interface with organizations through the hiring process and you know every other way that an employee right. uh, connects with an, uh, with an organization. But many, many organizations uh, are, are way behind the curve in terms of digital transformation and adopting um, the usage of usage of these technologies and doing it in a meaningful uh, and streamlined kind of a way. And, and so you have it coming from both sides. Mm -hmm. And, and then to your point, you end up with a really crummy uh, applicant experience or employee experience as they go through the process. And it, it, and it's just aggravating to everybody. So we definitely need to figure out how to fix that. We need to be um, employee centric. We need to be customer centric. We need to be applicant centric. Uh, and a, another piece that really was interesting to me as you were as you were explaining um, the 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 labor shortage, especially around skilled types of positions, is one thing. If if we haven't learned anything else from the pandemic, we've learned that geographical barriers mm -hmm. in relation to work are artificial. Like we we can connect with anyone anywhere. We can we can have a global workforce. We can. Um, uh, have a virtual team and it doesn't matter. We don't need that. Just hire people just from our metropolitan area, wherever we happen to be, but that opens up a whole nother, uh, <laughs> you know, whole range of challenges and problems. Um, and it, so on the one hand, it's really nice that now we have this global labor force that, that is at our fingertips, so to speak, in terms of filling these skills area, these skilled areas, mm -hmm. But man, that, that's a really hard thing to do and to do it well. And, and something that else that gets overlooked is that, you know, employees, companies and employees struggled with managers prior to the pandemic. Um, you know, it's been well known, Gallup's done a tremendous amount of studies, you know, with it that people don't leave companies, they leave their manager. 
So, and, and it, it really hasn't gotten a whole lot better. Um, pretty consistent through since the early 2000s. Uh, employee disengagement is, is high. Employee engagement is low. Only about thir a third of the population, a third of um, most workforces were engaged at work, uh, which fell upon the managers to, to a degree to help do that. Now, on top of, of managers struggling to manage their teams, now we have remote teams. We have managers who aren't very comfortable with an on-site team. Now they have to manage a remote team. Even more troubling, they have to manage a hybrid team that some of their workers aren't there, some of them are. So imagine you're having this meeting. We, you're allowed to, you can work from home three days a week. Great, so two days a week, we'll plan all our meetings on those two days. Well, the hybrid workforce may not be that everybody is in on site those two days every week. They may not work out for people. People have, are gonna have new childcare, uh, elder care, uh, responsibilities at home. Maybe they don't wanna commute. Maybe they got rid of one car. They don't wanna commute five days a week. There's gonna be a whole raft of new problems that people are just expecting that, well, yeah, that'll work. Um, we'll plan all our meetings on Thursday. That doesn't solve the problem. So I, it's, we're gonna live in this area, you certainly know this, you talk about it all the time. We're gonna live in this era of perpetual uncertainty for a while, VUCA, you know, volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous, <laughs> but mostly yeah. that uncertainty for a, for a maybe forever. Yeah. And most people are very uncomfortable with that, um, you know, and and they haven't. And then it then it opens up a raft of issues. If, OK, we can have most of the team here on Thursdays. Uh, what are the technologies? How, how are we how are we going to get everybody together to have a, a, a good conversation, a collaborative conversation? Uh, does everybody have the technology to be able to do that? Uh, and how are we going to, you know, how are we going to engage the people who aren't there on a regular basis? I mean, it's nice to be able to recruit people from without a geographic limitation, but how do we then engage those people? How do we make them feel part of the culture? If, if managers and companies were so bad at before that they couldn't get more than 30% of the people engaged, what happens yep. when they don't see them face to face? They're not even there. Uh, so it, it's going to be, it's going to keep us busy <laughs> for a while. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And can and, and top talent has choices. And, and we say when I'm talking about top talent, this isn't like, oh, the CEOs. I mean, we're talking, uh, I can't tell you how many calls we get on a regular basis now from the trades, from construction companies, plumbers, electrician, welders. I mean, we had shortages before. Now it's even bigger. Uh, IT companies, uh, healthcare. I mean, the same comp the same organizations that were struggling, um, you know, just two years ago, <laughs> you know, yep. last year, everybody sort of got a breather. Uh, but two years ago, they it's heating, it's heating up big time. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, Ira, it has been a real pleasure talking with you. The time has flown by. Uh, we're at the tail end of, of the episode today. But before we part ways, I did want to give you a chance to share with listeners how they can get connected with you, how they can find out more about your organization, your business, and then give us the final word on the topic for today. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thanks. Uh, so you can reach me at my website. Well, my company website is successperformancesolutions.com. You can also go to ibrawolf.com. I'm on LinkedIn, Twitter. Uh, you just type my name into Google. You'll probably find me, uh, especially if you put Googleization next to it. Uh, it's there. I do have a community, Googleization Nation. It's free. Um, you can join that. Uh, that's probably the, that's a really easy way to get uh, updates of, of what's going on and, and with my podcast. And uh, we're, we're, I do a lot of work. We're talking a lot about adaptability these days. We have an, a new adaptability quotient. Uh, it's, it's fun and actually it's done through a chat bot. It's not talking about new and innovative ways. You don't do it, it's not the standard assessment that here's a statement and do I agree or disagree with it. Uh, it's done through a chat bot. So uh, if you're interested in that, uh, please reach out to me and uh, give me a call. 
Um, the, the final word is, um, is we, I said it before, we are going to be living in an area of perpetual change uh, of un and uncertainty. And, uh, you know, we need to become comfortable with it and, you know, look for ways that you can develop, build the courage and, and gain confidence uh, to be able to uh, continue to move forward. Um, the, within chaos, there's always opportunity. And uh, I'm extremely hopeful of where we're headed uh, and uh, hopefully you'll connect and uh, get some of the good vibes. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you, Ira. It, I, I am also hopeful. I, I, I think there's, there's a really tremendous array of opportunities that are before us if we can learn to, to sit within the discomfort and the ambiguity and the messiness and, and become more adaptable and resilient as we move into the, this uncertain future. I encourage listeners to reach out, get connected with Ira, check out his business, check out his books, uh, his podcast, all the many uh, amazing things that he's doing and all the great content that Ira is putting out. And as always, I hope everyone can stay healthy and safe, that you can find meaning and purpose at work each and every day. And I hope you all have a great week. We are excited about the launch of HCI's new magazine, Human Capital Leadership. Human Capital Leadership is a free interactive e-magazine designed to help individuals, leaders, and organizations find innovative approaches to maximize their human capital potential. We will be publishing issues quarterly in August, November, February, and May. Check out the first issue and let us know what you think. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Human Capital Innovations Podcast. I hope you stay healthy and safe and that you have a great week.